Hello everyone, these are instructions for working with the projection modeling add-on. The main essence of the add-on is to create 3D models from 2D planes created from curves or mesh planes, this opens up a lot of possibilities. To begin with you will need at least two profiles to create a treed object. Your object's axis must be perpendicular to the plane and intersect between this axis directions of other profiles. If you see that your axis is wrong, then I made a button for you that will set the axis perpendicular regardless of the inclination. If the perpendicular is directed in the opposite direction, then you can rotate it 180 degrees with the adjacent button. Now let's just select two objects and create a projection object. Each collection of projections has a projection ray length. If you don't have enough beam length, you can increase it. By reducing the length of the beam, you can cut off part of the part with the beam. If you turn on the frame on the projected object, you may see something scary, but don't worry, after you apply it, your fear will go away. A necessary jump tree will disappear after apply. You have an apply button that applies the projection object. And next to it there is a button that duplicates and applies in case you want to do more work with that projection. You can go into curve editing mode and change the projection object in real time. You can also adjust the resolution of the entire curve thus adjusting the grid on the object. You can also adjust the resolution of each spline separately in edit mode. If you specify a resolution that is too small, your projection object will disappear. Let's move on to the next one. I'll delay it so it doesn't distract you. Here is our next object. Let's check this axis. In my opinion, everything is in order. When moving objects, you will reduce their intersection, which will allow you to get different shapes. Same with rotating objects. The projection object that appears in the list allows you to quickly select it. Also, when you select it in the list, you can see what objects it consists of and what collections of rays they belong to. As you already understood, number one switches to the first set of rays. The length of the ray of the first set extends to the objects located here, similarly with the second set. Let's move on to the next one. I think that you should understand that the form is created exactly as you make it from two or more projections. You can also cut off part of the object by bringing the projection closer to it.
Since the beam comes from the projection along one's axis, you can easily rotate the profile while being in the center of the projection object. Let's go further. Let's move on to more complex details. I'll show you how to make these holes. You create a regular circle from a curve. It appeared quite far away, and it will take time to insert it with your hands. I have the loft curve add-in. In it, I added a function to simplify this process, but perhaps you have other tools for this. The essence of this function is that it places the decursor on an object and rotates it in the same way as the object, and with the second button you move any object to the place of the cursor with its rotation. Then you move the circle to where you need it, select it and the active planes, and press the G control button to merge them. If your circle is inclined relative to the plane, then it will be projected onto it in the same way, be careful. You may have noticed the panel that appears in the curve editing mode. I plan to show this in the next instruction about how to work with curves, but I will show a little nuance of how this function works on a demodel. You can see the bevel function on curves and the function that, when selecting a bevel, creates a right angle back. Bevel also has two modes, chamfer and rounded bevel. The more complex the projection, the more it will slow down at this moment. For this, I added a button to disable the projection object. Here you can disable all projections that make up the object. Turning off an object significantly optimizes working with curves. When you remove an object from the list, it removes the object and retrieves the deprojections from the collections leaving them in the general projection collection so you don't lose them. I plan to show one of the bugs and how to deal with it on this object. But maybe you won't meet him. Fracture of the projection object in the middle in different directions. I don't know why this happened once, maybe I'm paranoid, but they fixed it, or increased the length of the beam. Or in the curve editing mode, move it a little, change the scale on internal objects, perhaps this is overlapping points between projections. If you encounter anything like this, please message me immediately. Let's create several projection objects at once. When creating a projection object, a button for adding a third ray appears. To add a third projection ray, select the planner object and the projection object you want to add it to. Perhaps it will be more noticeable on the next object. I will add a default beam length setting to the Adun settings so that everyone can customize it to suit themselves. Well, there are quite a lot of profiles now, and in order not to get lost in them, you can disable those that you don't need.
It's also quite easy to navigate which profile belongs to which collection of rays. You can connect or disconnect objects from projection collections or additionally add new ones. So now let's talk about the grid. After apply, the mesh will automatically be cleared of unnecessary geometry, and here you have two options. You can edit it manually if you need minimal geometry or use remesh. A small note, if you use a mirror on curved planes, the remesh of the projected object will not work correctly use a mirror on the projected object. The top setting controls the number of mesh subdivisions, and the bottom setting controls the width of the grid on the mesh. This is a remesh blender, and it works relatively well. You can add bevel and see where you lack space and expand there with curves. I also added stitching to the bevel settings in some cases it will help you if several points are nearby and the bevel gets damaged. One of the advantages of this remesh is that you can still edit the object without applying anything. You can also use remesh on apply objects and any other objects. But you can also use other remesh such as quid remesh. When you use many projections, it will become more convenient for you to name them in this list to quickly navigate. If you delete objects not through a list, then you will be left with many collections. So as not to have to look for which collections are used and which are not, I added the magic wand function. It is advisable to first click refresh and then the magic wand will pull out objects from unused collections and erase the collections. This detail was not in the plans, everything is not according to plan. If everything is clear with lists of projection objects, then why do we need lists of all collections with projections? I'll show you what this is all for. If any of the projections are duplicated, it will continue to work. You can add a new object that is completely different or remove one of these. Thank you all for watching, I tried to tell you as much as possible, see you in the next videos.